Okay, um, and now for our final speaker today, we're going over to Brazil to join Eric. Eric has been named in, by Microsoft as a most valuable professional MVP. He is a specialist in the US community builder. Eric is a community organizer in Brazil and a software independent architect in serverless and contain, container based and hybrid cloud solutions. He's given more than 100 talks in seven different countries and he's created training courses um, in focusing on Node.js, JavaScript and cloud computing. To top that all off, he also works as a voluntary leader um, of the Node BR, JavaScript Sao Paulo, and the Nerd Zoll communities. Um, please welcome Eric, who will be talking about 10 secrets to help you improve Node.js security. Hello, my friends. I'm Eric. I'm from Brazil. I'm super happy to be with you guys right here, like closing this whole event. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I've spent a lot of time building it for you. And this talk actually is a lot of tips to help you to improve your, uh, actually your current uh, application. So I will show you a few of this example. Maybe you might know, but I know that there's a lot of people right there and I hope to help you uh, during this whole talk. By the way, who cares about app security? Help security is something scares a lot of people, but actually most of my customers don't care much about uh, security. Actually, uh, they would hire someone focus on security if something is happening or if actually there is some incident running over there. So this is uh, super interesting. And some of their systems look like this, like, ah, okay, we will we'll see this application later. We can. Uh, publish it in other platform. We can put on the cloud to improve security, but we know that is not that simple. And I'm gonna show you why. And yeah, do you think that JavaScript is live? Do you think JavaScript is a, a really uh, cracker-proof language? But yeah, I, I have a sad message for you. It's not. This actually is a very famous uh, scandal that has happened on Node.js platform. As you can see, like millions of people were uh, affected by this uh, scandal. And actually, this was an, an, uh, an error on the event stream library. So the event stream library had like a dependency, which was, let me see the name, flat map stream, which uh, an attacker just add this dependency as third part, and it was a uh, uh, backdoor. It was stealing trying to steal actually wallet, uh, Bitcoin wallets. So this was super uh, uh, malicious code and actually something to care about, like money happening over there and it's crazy. And actually we have uh, a few other uh, huge problems on JavaScript ecosystem, which happened on the Lodash or jQuery, which was a, a, a vulnerability that you can, you can inject code or just like, do the new service uh, attacks on the Node.js object. So this is actually something that is already happened. And actually, it has happened over, uh, over all times, actually. It was only discovered by, next year, by last year, and it's something to care about. Like, this package uh, affected 4.35 million projects around the world. So yeah, we should take care about our packages. But this talk is not about only the packages. I will show you other approach as well. But yeah, maybe you use Lodash and if you are on the older version, try to update it because there is actually a patch, but be careful on your packages. But yeah, most of you are thinking, okay, but this will happen if I'm, ro I'm running my application on a bare metal system or other like VM. But if I go to the cloud computer, there is no problem. So most actually of my customers think like this, like I have AWS, I have Google, I have Azure. They have certifications to take care about my applications. But we have actually a known attack, which is cache overflow. Basically, the attacker will throw requests on your application and steal your own money. Not actually steal your money, but spend your money on the infrastructure. 
this actually is something uh, very common on service applications. So sometimes people just forget to add like public keys or uh, whitelists for IPs. And actually it's public there. So attackers would run like a, a simple uh, while through for or just some uh, iteration. And actually your application is high scalable, high available and you pay per use. So this would spend your own money. And actually it has happened to me, but it wasn't an attacker. It was actually a developer mistake and we suffer really, really uh, uh, high. Okay, we know JavaScript is growing a lot. We have uh, a lot of platforms, a lot of uh, new packages chipping every day, but I think security is not following the same path. It's just a few companies that are trying to, to publish the vulnerabilities that I'll show you a lot today. And yeah, and actually, if you have something scandal, like if you work on financial companies or you just want to release new software and you lost like your customer's password or your customer's information, this is something really bad and you can lose the customer's trust. Before diving, all of this talk is already on my GitHub or all already online. So you can get all the slides, all the reference that I show that I will show you right here. But if you can try to print some uh, some checkpoints from the slides, publish on Twitter, uh, just mention like the, the conference, the NodeConf Co, mention me as well. And it would be nice to people uh, to see, look for the talk as well. I won't quote today because my goal is to show it in practice. So I will show a few packages, a few pra practices. But if you want to quote, I put all the reference at the end. You can see it later. Okay. Okay. Most of the tips I got you, it's for, uh, you can use for any application you want. You can use on Node.js, you can use on Java, C Sharp, a lot of them if you follow this. But I'll get some, uh, I just bring, I brought just some categories for you, like this one, these are tens, and the category is app. So just do not block your event loop. This is something that most of people look and say, okay, I won't do that, but man, this is super common in production. Some people just try to upload a CSV and try to interact the whole data from CSV uh, in memory, like a while loop or a map filter and reduce. And actually it stops the whole event loop to, uh, run, for running. And then when you try to receive more and more requests, it's like a Daniel of service attack, but actually it's not an attack. It's just a bad approach, a bad system design, which blocks all the, your whole infrastructure. When running Node.js applications, try to run as simple as possible. This is something that you might uh, uh, heard before, but it's something to always uh, remind and avoid uh, this kind of applications. And to do that, use Node.js strings as much as well. I have this feature, it's already there, same of the Node.js. You can process data on demand, you can get data and you can split as a pipeline. Getting the previous uh, example, getting from the previous example, you can see like you can get the CSV instead, like getting the whole data and put in memory. You can read this data as a buffer or split it in chunks. And you, you actually can get all of these chunks or actually your pieces of this file. And you can actually run it as a single element in this the program. Like, yeah, oh, for each element, I will parse to JSON, I will map it, and I will insert it on the database. This is uh, this is something that you should search a little bit if you've never heard before, because using this one, you can improve Node.js performance, Node.js security, and a lot of other uh, improvements. Uh, the best way to improve security in talking about APIs is using uh, an API gateway. The API gateway would be uh, uh, the wall on your application and all of the ingress or egress access, like all traffic will be filtered by your application. So imagine 
You have a lot of customers accessing your application every day, but how do you know if it's an attack or it's just someone using a lot of your application? So you can specify uh, API keys, you can uh, limit rate limits, and if you, you, you get suspect, you can put alerts and you can like specify which user I, are using, is using more your APIs and actually you can uh, deliver features better to your customer because you know their behavior. However, there is a lot of uh, features that you can use like this approach. Like imagine your infrastructure are running, uh, is running on infrastructure and somewhere else or on, on the cloud or actually on your server, on your house. When you have the gateway, all the SX will go to this filter, which will be like the locker from the door. And if it's not like the API key or the IP or some key that you, you must have to access your infrastructure, all the, this traffic will be blocked and nothing will happen to your application. And even if something bad happened to your infrastructure, imagine your application is down, your load balancers are down too, and so your customer are trying to your customers are trying to access your APIs. So you can say, "Oh, sorry, mate, I don't know what's happening with my my infrastructure, but I won't send you any sensitive information." This is something really nice to think about it. Great, avoid SQL identifiers in the full port. I don't know if you ever saw, but this uh, this is something really really interesting. When you're uh, uh, creating your infrastructure, sometimes you open like MongoDB, Post, Triggers, or whatever uh, uh, database or service you want. But we usually change the default part. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but sometimes uh, attackers are always scanning your server, like your IP or your DNS, and they can see like this open port. Like for development or staging uh, environment, this is so common. Like, oh, people say, oh, I just steal your database and you must send me Bitcoins because I want to. And this is something that I, I talk to my customers. So like, oh, Postgres are running, or Postgres is running on 5432, my SQL, or MongoDB, they have all this default port. They should, if you are not using actually an um, API gateway, change it all this default ports because it would be a little bit harder for them to understand which servers are running in each port. And actually, this is something common as well, like incremental IDs on routes. And like, I've seen a lot of websites using the same pattern, like slash users, slash one, slash users, slash two. And if you're like a smart programmer, try, okay, maybe this is an incremental ID I will just run a for and download the whole database from this uh, system. This is something really bad, but it's more common than, than we imagine. Instead, using uh, incremental IDs, we can use UID. Like you can create a safe identifier, and it's even harder for the customer to understand, but you have a little bit marketing process on your application, but it's not so bad. So this is actually a very good practice to do it. And this is something that maybe if you ever search about security and actually Node.js, most of them are about Node.js packages. Because Node.js packages, we are creating all, a lot of packages every day to like improve our productivity, to ship more applications faster. But we know that some people like to like prank people or just to steal uh, uh, Bitcoins over there. But yeah, packages are not so simple if you try to think like, how do I know which dependency from dependency from dependency has a problem? And if actually I found uh, the dependency that is something like uh, some high vulnerability, how do I know if I want to change it or I just want to move on or just block my whole application? I don't know. This is really hard. And I have some questions for you. How often do you update your uh, packages? I don't know. Most of my customers, they don't uh, update. They just think, oh, no, it's working. It's working in production. There is no problem. I won't change anything. That is already right. 
and this is something really hard to think. And actually, how do you know if a uh, dependency is safe to use? Like this case of event string, I think the impact was so awful because it's hard to know like the huge, like, the end of the path for the dependency. So this is something to care about. But yeah, we have this friend, Liran Fall from our amazing community. He built this, uh, this tool. I just put the link as well there. It's npkey. Use npkey, you can use like, you can search for, uh, for vulnerabilities on the whole tree of the dependency tree, and you can identify which one's a problem. But actually, they use a sneaky database. So you can go to the database, you can find on the website and search, oh, is this a package safe to use? Like, oh, Express, Mongo Express, uh, HackJS, and so on. This is super nice. And right now they, they just released a VS Code extension, so you can install it. And when you're coding, you can see, you can receive hints like, oh, this is a, a vulnerable package and you can click on fix it and they will fix to the, the right version of this application. I like it, this ex extension so much because that is not so effort for us, like as programmer, we can just install and see the hints on the, the VS code and know if something goes wrong before going to production and before being attacked. Nice. And this one, it's nice as well. Manage environment variables. Variables, we know that sometimes uh, if you look to the GitHub, you can see a lot of credential loss right there. Uh, a lot of people like publish this uh, credentials by mistake and it's scary a lot of people um, it's like oh man should i just put a service and how do i avoid some application to go outside or to attack my application to steal variables this is uh, uh, something more sensitive to think about it i've been using a lot system manager from AWS to my applications are like when I'm working in a team, the developers won't know where is the, the, the production variables or where is the, the, the database variables. You can just publish it there. Uh, the manager will just change the, those variables and the production stage will be safe from everyone. And actually it's, it's super simple as well. Like you can define keys, and if you can click on this case, if you have access to view it, you can see the value for this one. I know this is something looks like simpler, but it's not that common for people over there to do that. And if you use uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, you can use HashCorp uh, Vault and you can put like on a, side, on a sidecar and the container will exchange the variables through each other. So if other container in other place try to access the same variable, you can define, oh, this one have no access to get any data from my container. Yeah, but I know it's easier to publish it all on GitHub, but there is any way to publish it safely on GitHub. Yeah. We have GitCrypt, Git Git you can publish your, uh, your credentials right there, but you can publish it in Crypt. So this is so much easier to do it and you, you have no third part uh, services to manage it at all. Like your .m file, you publish it all on GitHub and it's safe to use using like this. But you, you have actually a key to store with your team or your user to access it all. Perfect. You have uh, to be careful when using Docker. I love Docker as well, but there's a lot of problems over there that we should take care. First of all, don't expose your Docker sock because if your container have access to this uh, Docker sock, they have root, like they have the main user or the whole machine or the whole container. They can install third-party applications and they can do anything to your application. You can limit all capabilities. So you can say, oh, I don't want to, I, I, I need this container to be read-only. I want to use only uh, only the webcam, but I don't use uh, the audio from the machine and so on. So you can cap all 
uh, data beliefs. So nice. For volumes, you can like mirror volumes on your application, in your machine, but sometimes you don't know what is going on inside this image. So you can just drop all capabilities and say, oh, this is only read only. There is no executable. They have no permission to add any I/O on my application. And don't use Docker Compose in production. I think this is more uh, unusual, but I've seen a lot in production system. If you use Docker, use Docker using Kubernetes or Docker Swarm or any orchestrator. If your Docker uh, your application are running on Docker Compose, if, if something goes wrong, your application is down and your whole infrastructure is down, you have to go to the container or to the machine and restart it all by hand. Okay, your fourth, handle network policies. We saw, I've talked a little bit about the vault that you can like put all your environment variables right there, but you can cap all the, the the other, the external dependencies as well, the external calls as well. Using Kubernetes, you can deny all egress, all ingress capabilities, like any container would access each other. No one will access the internet. No one will try to uh, send uh, data outside if you don't want to. And you can use Intrinsic. Intrinsic is a good package for like limiting your Node.js packages. You can create like a policy and actually, that is a lot of uh, a good features right there. Like you can uh, limit your outbound HTTP requests, the communication, and you can do all uh, of these capabilities. This is super, super nice. They have tokenization as well. And so I will go through in these packages because I already put the, them all on my first, so you can look at it later. And that is something on Node.js 15, which is not stable yet, but I really like it, which is the policies. You can define policies on a JSON file, and you can specify something that the intrinsic are doing right there. It's really, really new, but I don't know uh, what is the next step for that, but I'm really looking forward for this feature, and I really want to. Yeah. More top three is for tooling to stay static code analysis. So you can install, uh, if you use VS code or any editor, you can install a lot of plugins to make sure that nothing will go wrong like for outside. You can install ESLink plugin, you can install Sonar Cube, you can put a lot of plugins on Sonar Cube. And if you're thinking, oh, I have Sonar Cube, I have my dependencies, I have NPM or NPM packages. So we can install our plugin to check all the packages before going to production and we can see it all on the CI process. This is really, really nice. This is something that anyone should have on their infrastructure. And actually you can use Sneaky. So Sneaky is not paying me <laughs> to say like that, but I really like their tools because it's helping a lot of developers for free. There is a lot of resources for this talk that I got from uh, sneaky and you should look forward and you should look uh, their application as well. If you're using GitHub or other uh, visitors, they can open a lot of, uh, uh, they could show you vulnerabilities, what you can do, which version you can do and which is the state for this vulnerability. It's really, really nice. And your top two tooling is for monitoring, to monitor your application. This is something that you think, okay, I should monitor my application for performance, uh, for reliability, or for observability, as uh, Liz just talked on the previous talk, but you can uh, observe for security as well. So we should know a problem before our customers. This is something that I've been using a lot in all of my customers' meetings. I said, man, uh, if something goes wrong, I prefer to calling my customer and said, oh, uh, today I will be off, like my system will be down for an hour because we have something here. I have to release an update and I can just create an, any story for that. But just uh, it's really bad when they call, oh, my system is off. What is going on? So, you know, and you actually don't know. And this is something crazy. 
I've been using a lot New Relic in all of these customers. I've been seeing like customers because I, I used to work as a consultancy here, as a consultant actually. And these, to these tools is uh, helping them a lot for that. So you can create alerts, you can uh, specify where is the, the problem in the packages. You can see like, oh, there is like a high level request here. I know what's going on. So we will send emails for the manager, tech lead, and for all the team to look at this system before the customer will look. And this is something, uh, again, it's something that everyone should have in their infrastructure, not actually the new relic, but an application performance tool to analyze the whole infrastructure and to see before customers. And even though we know that some people, uh, we, we work with trust people, like we trust each other, but sometimes, I don't know, we, we, we have to know what is going on on AWS account or on your, uh, your cloud provider. Using AWS CloudTrail, you could like see the whole logs of each one. Like imagine, by mistake, someone on your team just deleted your whole infrastructure. So using this one, you can receive a notification before it happens, or you can like say, oh, what you're trying to do, or you can actually monitor all your uh, uh, activity on your application. Yeah. This one I've been using a lot as well in big teams. When you have more than 10 people working together, it's good to know when something happened because you can like, you can trace what happened on your relic and your cloud and say, oh, Maybe this application just go, goes down because I have changed or I just removed a machine on AWS. And lock your computer after using it. Yeah, this is something I've, I actually, I like what you show uh, security biting tools, but it's just for pranking my friends, just to have some fun. But it's something to show how dangerous it is to like just avoid your machine unlocked. Like someone could install some uh, malicious program and you can see it. I just built a VS Code extension, which is in Portuguese, so I will just translate for you. Uh, you know the comma, we have the same column. Uh, they have the Greek same column. When you replace the Greek same column by uh, our normal same column, the VS code or your code won't work anymore. But if you look at the, the, uh, the same code, you can see, oh my God, it's actually the same code. Like here, I'll show you some demo. It's already on GitHub if you wanna look later. So here I have that .NET application and I will install the extension and reload it. And then I'll go back and look, it's all green and it's saved, and then, oh my God, the whole code is gone. But if you look at the, the character, it's hard to define what's going on. Like it's, it's a character. So this is something really, really terrible to do. And this one I just did with my girlfriend. Uh, my girlfriend were, uh, were working and was working. And I just installed this extension to simulate Git merge, like here. If you enter on her application, all the files you press like git merge. And this is for so she was so scared. But do not forget your PC unlocked because it could be very, very dangerous and very bad. Whew, a lot of content, isn't it? All of this content will go to my website so you can uh, see all of the talks I've been doing around the world, all of the content I did before as well. And this talk will be there for sure. And thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really happy to be here. I hope this talk was uh, a little bit helpful for you. And if it was helpful for you, please mention me on Twitter, talk to me because I really wanna know about it. If you wanna go to the websites or this whole reference I've been publishing here, this is the, the links. You can go to the slides, you can look forward for all of them, and you actually can talk to me as well, okay? So thank you so much for your time again. I'm really happy to be here. I'm Eric Lander, and thank you again.
was excellent. And um, you are a lot crueler to people when they leave their screens unlocked than I used to be. I used to just change their backdrop to pictures of my little pony. Um, but that was enough. If, if you worked on my team and you were ponied, you knew you'd been ponied. So, <laughs> but um, it's a very, very good point. And it's one of the biggest security holes in development. It's just always remember to lock sure. Got one question that's come through i think we've got time for so alec i'm uh, sorry alexandri has asked um does npm check the integrity of the package was installed in a project i have no idea for this question i think npm audit will do something like that to check it all but i'm not sure about the npm itself but i've been using other tools like sneaky or other like new relic to check the integrity of the package, but I really don't know. Yeah, but we can ask for this uh, NPM guys. I'm sure they would have a certain uh, answer for that. <laughs> cool. Well, um, I'm going to draw it to a close there. Eric, thank you very much. That was an excellent end to an excellent day of talks.